Welcome to this service at Faith and Victory Church. This is the place to come to receive your miracle from God. Now, let's join our service already in progress. Hallelujah. Going to the book of 1 Samuel, uh, today we're going to be talking about <coughs> um, something the Lord began to talk to me about. And so, we're going to talk to you about it. Because he talked to me to talk to you. Hallelujah. Um, look at 1 Samuel chapter 2, verse 30. It says, Wherefore the Lord God of Israel saith, I said indeed that thy house and the house of thy father should, <coughs> excuse me, should walk before me forever. And now the Lord saith, Be it far from me. For them that honor me I will honor. And them that despise me shall lightly esteemed. Look over if you will into the gospel of John, the fifth chapter. God, John's Gospel, the fifth chapter. That's right after John's Gospel, the fourth chapter. Huh? Page 734. Uh, page 734 in Caps' Bible, page 109 in mine. See, I have the spiritual Bible. Verse 23. That all men should honor the Son, even... As they honor the Father, he that honoreth not the Son, honoreth not the Father which hath sent him. Today we're going to be talking about honoring God. Now the word honor, you know, in, the, in these passages, uh, refer, is, is translated honor, but it, it means to esteem, to value, to revere. To esteem, to value, to revere. And... Um, what I have been seeing in the body of Christ is the lack of honor of God. Jesus said, if you love me, keep my commandments. And see, love is directly tied to honor. Go to the 91st Psalm, if you will. I will say this, you do not love that which you do not honor. And you honor that which you love. Amen. Amen. If you don't honor your wife, if you don't honor your husband, you don't love them. And if you love them, you'll honor them. You'll value them. You will esteem them. Can you say amen? Too much of the body of Christ, and I'm going to say this, and I'm, to, I'm just going to be real, real blunt here. In our word of faith, charismatic circles, and I'm, I'm one of them. I grew up classical Pentecostal, got a hold of the word of faith, came over among the, the charismatic word of faith bunch. Hallelujah. And, uh, you know, and I'm still there. Amen. But one of the things we did, we began to talk, uh, put so much emphasis on what we got out of God. We stopped looking at God as who he is and just simply a supply means or a tap for us to tap into and get out of. That went over big. You cannot come in and go, I'm under grace. I don't have to tithe. I don't have to give. I don't have to do this and honor God. That I can live any way I want to live. I can live in adultery. I can live in fornication. I can live in homosexuality. And it doesn't matter. I'm still going to be blessed. That is not honoring God. And I'm going to say another statement here. I said this this morning in Winston-Salem. I kind of got this laying in bed the other night. And kind of got more meat on the bones today while I was preaching in Winston. So you get the enhanced version. Aren't you glad? They got a good version. You get the enhanced version. When we go to the, the 91st Psalm, what it says here, it says, He that set his love upon me, you know, I mean, it goes on and says, He that dwelleth under the secret place of the Most High. And he goes on and on and talks all about all the things that happen when you set your love on the Most High. And then God, God comes back down there at the end of that 91st Psalm. Uh, well, go ahead. Yeah. You got it up on your screen? Verse 4. Because he set his love upon me, therefore I will deliver him. I will set him on high because he hath known my name. Verse 15. And it says, he shall call upon me, and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. Well, what did Samuel say? Samuel said, 1 Samuel uh, uh, 2.30, it, um, it said that if you honor him, he will honor you. Now, notice back over here in Psalm 91, because he set his love upon me, gets down to verse 15, says, I will honor him. Loving God is honoring God. In other words, if you love him, you will honor him. You will esteem him. You will value him. You will revere him. You will hold him in reverential awe. 
Meaning what? You don't do bonehead things like go, I'm under grace, therefore I can go out and sin like a dog and still get blessed. You don't honor God if you do that. You, as a matter of fact, you dishonor God. I, I, you know, I, I make it uh, real clear. I make it very clear. You cannot go out and cater to your flesh and then turn around and say, I honor God. God said throughout the Old Testament, now we know we have the Old Testament commandments. Well, we're not under the law. No, we're not. Jesus came to fulfill the law. And in fulfilling the law, Jesus administered to the church grace. But grace is not, as some people simply define it in the simplest of terms, unmerited favor. It is, it is, there is one of the definitions, but you cannot, if you go put that definition in all the scriptures that say grace throughout the New Testament, it won't fit. There's places where the grace was talking about money. There's places where the grace was talking about a strength. So let's say it this way. Jesus came not to do away, remember he said, I did not come to do, do away with the law. I came to fulfill the law. Well, we're not under the law. No, you're under grace. What is that grace? Jesus fulfilled the law and graced you to walk out that fulfillment. If you'll do it. Meaning this. God said in the old covenant that thou shalt not commit adultery. He has not changed his mind. He didn't get to the New Testament. You get grace and it was all right to be an adulterer. God said you shall not steal. Did not get to the New Testament, get grace, and now it's okay to go steal. No, Jesus fulfilled it. It's still God's law. It's that you don't have to do that to get to God. You come to Christ who fulfilled that. He graces and empowers you to do what the word says to do. But you still got to do it. People who say, I don't have to tithe, I don't have to give, I don't have to go to church, I don't have to submit to it, I have to obey, dishonor God. They do not value, they do not esteem God. They don't have a reverential awe of God. Why? Because God said do all those things. If you love God, let me say this, your love for God, your honoring of God is directly tied and connected and intertwined with your faith. Now, the Greek word for faith, P-I-S-C-I-S, also means to believe or to trust. It is the root word for that. It means to believe or to trust. Faith, you know, and, we, and because Brother Hagen taught, you know, Mark 11, 23, 24, which was his mission, which was his call, which God told him to do, go teach my people faith. Now, he taught other things. Now, you may not know that, but he did. He did not always teach Mark 11, 23, and 24. He taught it a bunch. Because that was his mission. That's what God gave him as his main mission. But we have majored in our circles on the believing and receiving from God. Which is valid. Everybody say it's valid. So now I'm not undoing that. I'm not saying we don't do that. I'm not saying we should throw all the books out. As a matter of fact, keep reading, keep studying, keep doing. But, that, but, but faith can, can not only, is not only limited to but faith of God, which Mark, you know, Mark Martin says, receiving and believing and receiving things from God. The prayer of believing and receiving, really. You know, putting your faith in what God said, receiving that from God, and having the answer and walk, living that way. But it also can mean faith in God. Trust. Belief. You cannot trust what you do not honor. That was the biggest holy hush I've ever heard in my life. You cannot trust and believe in that which you do not honor. You can't have confidence in what you do not honor. Amen. It is imperative that we wake up in the church, that we come back to a place that God, the, God himself is now the central focus of our existence. Amen. Receiving from God and believing God and getting things from God, what we call the lifestyle of faith. Amen. But I think there's a lot of people not getting answers. There's a lot of people not growing. There's a lot of people not, not getting it to work for them because they no longer trust, no longer esteem, no longer value, no longer revere God himself. And we have to come back. And we need to not, not just kind of slow back, slowly get back there. We need to run back there. Because I'm going to make a statement now that's going to mess up your theology. And it's not going to be weird. Your faith won't work if you don't honor God. 
I said, your faith will not work if you do not honor God. I don't believe that. Have you ever read the book of Galatians? For in Christ Jesus, neither circumcision avails anything, law, nor uncircumcision availeth anything outside the law, but faith which works by love. Well, I got the love of God in me. I'm not talking about having the love of God in you. I'm talking about love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your strength, with all your soul, and with all your strength. And your neighbor as yourself. On this hinge all the law of the prophets. So all the law of people, understand this. If you honor, if you love God, you will honor God and you will do what God wants. You will live the way God wants you to live. You will live a lifestyle that honors him, that esteems him. I, t I think I heard a couple of uh, pig noises out there. Grunting. Amen. Moses gets to the 91st Psalm and, and, and says, you know, He that abides in the shadow of the Almighty gets down to verse 14 and God answers back. And he says in this, because you set your love upon me, because you've honored me. Now, that, that, now if you read the last part of that Psalm, 91st Psalm and go back to 1 Samuel where God says, I'll honor him who honors me, you begin to see the parallel. There's a lot of people who say, I love God. If you love God, you will honor God. You will esteem him. You will value him. You will revere what he says. And let me say this. Adultery still displeases God. Stealing still displeases God. Using his name in vain still displeases God. Or let me use different terminology. Adultery still dishonors God. It demonstrates your, your lack of estimation your lack of value, your lack of revering the Father. I didn't come to church for this. I come to be told I can have what I say. Well, you will not get there if you don't do this. Somebody say amen. We in the church get so selfish sometimes. We have people who are looking for ways to do exactly what the Father says displeases him and then use what he has given them as a cloak to do it in. Grace. Because I'm under grace, I don't have to tithe and I'm going to get blessed anyway. God told them in the Old Testament when you didn't tithe, you were robbing him. Well, I'm under the New Testament. He still thinks it's stealing. He didn't change his mind. He sent Jesus to, to pay the price so we didn't have to live under the law. We could live under grace and be empowered to do what he said is right. Amen. Did you know the scripture says this in the New Testament? It said, glorify God in your spirit and in your body, which are God's. So we are call we're calling the church. I'm calling the church. I'm calling our church. To a place of revering God. Of coming back to an irreverential awe of God. That we no longer take the things of God flippantly. And lightly. We don't come to God as our sugar daddy. Yes. He told us. Listen. The, all the teaching that we've. You know from Dad Hagen and from Lester Summerall. And from T.L. Osborne. And from you know the church fathers of the, of the last century. Who taught us on how. Wigglesworth. Who taught us how to live by faith and not by sight. All that is accurate. All that is true. But it must be tempered. And, and understand this. The commitment level of those guys. And the reference of those guys. And the, and the dedication of those guys. Our second generation and third generation word of faith people. Don't have as a whole. They taught from a different perspective than a lot of our people teach from. Because they were coming out of an awe and a reverence and an and a, a, uh, honor of God that a lot of our people in our circles down no longer have. So when they taught it, it was coming from a different perspective of those, of, rather than those who were simply trying to teach it for the purpose. Of, uh, let, me, let me give you an example. A number of years ago, I was listening to somebody teach, and they, they were talking about, you know, I'm believing God for a one-time gift of X number of dollars, you know, and for me personally. And they, they said, but I got that from Brother Hagin. Well, I went back and listened to the tape, and I was listening, well, we're, and I was listening to the tape one day and heard him teaching it. And he's saying the exact same thing they were saying. 
except they got at the end of theirs and said, for me personally. He got to the end and then said, you ask me what I'm going to do with it. I'll tell you what we're going to do with it. We're going to put it right back into the work of the ministry. We're going to, build, we're going to make more tapes. We're going to print more books. We're going to get more people saved. We're going to go on more radio stations. Yeah. He was te he's, they were saying the same thing right up until that point. They were one that personally, he was talking about reaching more people for Jesus. Yeah. Amen? <clears throat> he's believing God for a one-time gift of $2 million for the ministry. He started out at 5000 These people are doing, I heard other people doing the same thing. And they, were, they were doing it for them personally on their own, their own personal self. It all sounded exactly alike until you find out why they were doing it. Yeah. And we've got a lot of people now who are wanting to live by faith because they want a car, they want a house, they want this, they want that. And it never enters their, their vocabulary that they're doing this to honor their father. To esteem the father. To revere the father. Because he said the just shall live by faith. By their trust and their belief in him. Yeah, we'll believe and receive. I'm not, I do not take anything I say as an anti-believing and receiving. I'm not doing that. I am saying <clears throat> that that is true, but if we don't ha come back over here and make sure that this part is right, we skew that part. And this part is to honor the Father, to esteem Him, to have a reverential awe of Him. Then you won't do stupid stuff like I'm believing for somebody else's wife. If you honor, if you reverentially have a reverential awe or fear of God, you won't be believing for somebody else's wife. Amen. You won't be believing for somebody else's husband. You won't be getting words about the Lord's going to give that man to you and he's married. Well, how do you know? Because the Lord said, I am the Lord, I hate divorce. Now, it doesn't mean he won't forgive people who've been divorced, but he hates it. Think about it now. We, we take things so flippantly. People, somebody asked, uh, there was a, one of those things on Facebook the other day, and they were asking, you know, how did you and Grandpa stay married so long? They said, we grew up in an age when something was broke, you fixed it. Yeah. We grew up in an age now, something's broke, you throw it away and go get something new. Right. Think about it. If, you're, if it's, it's more, it's, and a lot of times in our society, it's cheaper to go buy new than it is to fix. And today it's easier to get rid, of, get rid of something, get something new than it is to fix it. Amen. It might take work to fix a marriage. Amen. It might take work. Some people don't care. Amen. We come into the church. The divorce rate in the church has gone up. Why? Because people no longer esteem and value God. It's all about me. About my wants, my needs. What's, what about me in this? That, don't, don't shoot me. Now listen, if you've been divorced, God forgives you. Okay? I am just talking about a cultural thing that's taking place that we need to understand what's going on and it's affecting the church. Not just in that arena, all kinds of arenas where we no longer, in the church now, I'm going to tell you something. If you're going to go and pray and seek the Lord about whether to accept gays as part of the church community, there's something wrong. What do you mean? Because he's already said in his word what he thinks about it. You don't have to ask him again. If he's already said it, you don't have to ask him again what he thinks about it. Hello? Yeah, but they used the Bible to, you know, the KKK used the Bible to oppress black people. God did not say in the Bible that thou shalt not like black people. It ain't in there. But he did say that homosexuals, homosexuals will be turned over to a reprobate mind. And that if they practice that, they will not see the kingdom of heaven along with adulterers and different things. But that's one of the things he said, they will not see the kingdom of heaven. We don't need to pray about whether God wants to allow us to have black, uh, gays in leadership, not blacks, gays in leadership. But see, people try to go back to the black issue and, and pull that in and make them the same thing. I'd be offended. Amen. I said, I would be offended. Amen. Hello? Amen. I'm just telling you the truth. Thank you for your enthusiasm. When we come into the church, if you honored God, you would, people wouldn't say the things about their pastors, they say. Amen. Pastors wouldn't say things about the people, they, they say. Amen. If you honored God, 
If you loved him, you know, he said, touch not mine, and no one do my prophets, no harm. Now, that does not mean that you, you have to sit under an abusive, you know, whatever, and, and, and be beaten down, and they, they, they rip you off, and they're raping your women in the church and all that mess. Women are not called to the church to take care of the pastor. The pastor's wife is supposed to take care of the pastor. If he's single, he's supposed to be celibate. Until he finds a wife. If he finds a wife, finds a good thing. I mean, he, Paul said, I would you be as I am, but if you, if you can't be, then marry. But, you know, you're not supposed to sell your house and give it to the pastor so he can have a big house and, 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 be, and you give up to a higher anointing on that stuff. But in proper relationships in the church, there's a lot of people who just get offended over some of the dumbest stuff and go out and start running their mouth. If you feared God, you wouldn't say that. Number one, might, that pastor might need some room to grow in an area. And you've got to get, let God work on him. Hello? That went over big. They're perfect. No, they're not perfect. Men, I put my pants on the same way you do, one leg at the time. Now, I'm not a girl. I don't lay on the bed and put both of them in at the same time. Hello? Girls, girls just lay down there, pull them up, then jump up and, and, and jump into them because they were so tight. Had, had to get them up. Men don't do that. Well, they didn't used to. I see them guys come out in skinny jeans and I'm thinking, my God, you, got, you dress like a girl. Anyway, hallelujah. Nope. God says, honor me, esteem me, value me, revere me. Saul did not honor and esteem and revere God, the cost of his kingdom. How do you know? Because he did not do what the Lord said. Samuel shows up and Saul goes, hey, I did what the Lord said to do. He said, why do I hear sheep bleeding? Well, you know. See, he did not, he, he, he honored the wishes of the people above the command of God. And it cost him his kingdom. And they lost everything they got anyway. They lost all the sheep. They lost all the money. They lost the king. They, they didn't get any of the stuff they were trying to get by disobeying God because Saul wanted to make the people happy. God did not call us to make people happy. God called us to make him happy or to honor him. You can't make God happy. It pleases God when you honor him. I believe that, there, that there's joy that comes to the Father when his people honor him and do his will. Amen. I said Amen. And so we come to this point in the church, we have to ask ourselves the question, is it more important for me to please men or to please myself than it is to please the Father? Now, I found here in Psalm 91 that because he set his love upon me, and then God goes on, and one of the things is I'll honor him, notice that the things that came on the people came because they loved God or they honored God, they esteemed him, they valued him, they revered him. They got delivered, they got prospered, they got set free, they received the honor of God and got long life. All the things that we believe God for in our believing and receiving take place in correlation with setting our love on him, i.e. honoring him. Your faith works when you esteem and value and honor God. Why? Because if you esteem and value him, you'll trust him. You don't trust people you don't esteem and value. If you don't have any esteem for them, if you don't have any value for them, if you don't have any reverence or revere them, you won't trust them. And if you can't trust them, you can't have faith. Say Glory. It's the truth. And so I believe the Lord spoke, spoke to me this week, and, and, and I'm, I'm sharing this with you, that, that he is looking for people to come back to that place in their walk with him. I'm not telling you lay aside believing God for different things or believing God for needs you met or being healed or, you know, uh, using your, you know, praying about different things and believing and receiving. What I'm asking you to do is, Let's, let's move from that being the, the controlling factor of our life to coming back over here to an intimacy with God that that is the controlling factor of our life. And the faith in him 
that is birthed out of that reverence, that is birthed out of that esteeming, that is birthed out of being, having, holding him and revering him, having a reverential all of him, the faith that is birthed out of that to receive from him will suddenly to go up to another level. Because we're walking over here, our trust level in God will go up. Our estimation of his word will go up. And isn't faith, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word? That when we believe what God said and act on it, we get answers. How much more powerful is that going to be when we come to the place that we so revere him and so esteem him and so value him in our relationship with the Father? And of course the Son, Jesus said, he that honors the Son honors the Father. He that honors not the Son honors not the Father. That now our faith level of being able to pray and believe and receive suddenly goes out the roof. Because we know him. We need to know the Father. And I'm going to tell you, I can tell from some of these people who say some of the things they say, they don't know the Father. Amen. They might be born of him, but they don't know him. What do you mean? You cannot say, it doesn't matter if I commit adultery, it doesn't matter if I steal, it doesn't matter whatever, I'm going to get blessed anyway, and say you know the Father. Because you don't revere him and you don't honor him. Because he's already told you how he feels about that. If your parents say, you know, uh, I need for you to do such and such. And you just won't do it. You don't honor them. I understand stuff comes up. You get busy, whatever. But if they say, I want you to do such and such. And you won't do it. But you still want, you still want your, your whatever. You don't honor them. Hello. I said, hello. Do you honor God? And this is going, this, I'm going to really shock you today. We're going to be a short message. I'm going to blow your socks off. I'm done. Because this is what the Lord gave me. And I'm not going to add to it. And I'm not going to take away. Get up, Nathan. He fell out. Anything else I say could, could, could enhance any, what I've already said. Yeah. To esteem, to value, to revere. To honor. And if you love God, you honor God. And you can only honor God if you love God. Vice versa. And your faith works by love. They're connected. So the next time you hear somebody teaching some stupid stuff on television... That it doesn't matter what you do. It doesn't matter if you tithe. It doesn't matter if you give. It doesn't matter if you live in sin because you're under grace. Remember this message. My heart is to pursue God. To honor God. To esteem my Father. To value my Father. To revere my Father. And in doing so, I already know from the Old Testament things he said that bugs him. And I'm not going to do them. Now, if I fall into sin, I'll repent. But I'm not going to live under the guise that I can do it and get away with it and he's still going to bless me. That attitude is an attitude of dishonor. Amen? We trust that you were blessed by the Word of God and the flow of the Spirit of God in this service. If you would like to contact us, please write us via email at office at fbc.org or using our mailing address, P.O. Box 7752, Greensboro, North Carolina, 27417. If you would like to contribute to our ministry, please go to our website at www.fbc.org and click on the Giving Online button. Thank you, and may God richly bless you for your giving.